All right, what's going on, y'all, man? So y'all know it's time for the predictions, man. Got some big-time action going on tomorrow, so I'm going to give it to y'all, man. Uh, South Carolina versus Texas A&M. I'm going to feature three matchups. I'm going to talk through, and I'm going to just go through, like, the featured matchups and get my predictions on those and a couple of ACC. But three top matchups I can't wait to see um, this upcoming weekend. So first one's Texas A&M, South Carolina. Should be a good one. I got this one on upset alert. I do, because Texas A&M is a great team. Unbeaten in the SEC. Has been great this year. Only lost to Notre Dame. What worries me, though, is the emotional win that they had last week, right? Marcel Reed comes in, does a great job. Two touchdowns, a couple touchdowns on the ground. It was an electric win. And peep this, y'all. They did so good. They even landed two recruits, two outstanding recruits in Aaron Gregory and, and Jordan Carter. So I think Mike Elko does a great job. I think he's a phenomenal coach. I think they're going in the right direction. And I think they're building something special at Texas A&M. But this, is how, this just has the semblance of a letdown game for them, right? Number one, who's going to be the starting quarterback? Will it be Connor Wigman? Is he done? Is he torched? Or is it Marcel Reed? Now, if it's Marcel Reed, and as you guys can see right here with the FPI, it's kind of a toss-up, right? They have, obviously, Texas A&M favored 54.3%, but South Carolina with 457 says a lot. So the key is, for Marcel Reed, this will be the biggest start of his career. Now, he came in there, obviously, and, and, and subbed in Wigman, who didn't play well. But to go on the road at williams Bryce Stadium in front of that electric crowd, that's a tough, tall, that's a tall ass, and that's a tough task to ask for that quarterback, for a freshman. All right? Now, we've seen LSU go in there, right? Spirits quarterback, Garrett Nussmeyer. But, like, obviously, he didn't play. But he's been in the, been in the uh, NCAA for a long time. Or for a while, I should say. He struggled a little bit in that game. It took LSU a while to get going. You know what I'm saying? So, that's the part that worries me. So, if I'm texting a and I'm giving the ball to Le'Veon Moss, as you guys can see here. Having a phenomenal season, one of the top rushers in the SEC. 757 yards rushing, um, and as y'all can see, a whole lot of touchdowns, right? I'm going to get the ball to him. I'm going to set up the play-action pass, and I'm going to get Marcel Reed in a rhythm. Get him some easy throws, you know what I'm saying? Quick out, you know what I'm saying? And get it to some of your, your playmakers here like Thomas. That's going to be key for Texas a and you know? And another concern I have is them against that defensive line, right? Now, when you look at the defensive line, obviously for South Carolina, this guy right here, Kyle Kennard, right? Only 19 tackles, but look at the sack rate, eight and a half. He has to be one of the best in the country. We did some sack numbers uh, a couple of weeks ago when I said the top ones, a lot of them kind of stemming from S uh, ACC. Kyle Kennard is a beast, man, all right? You know what I'm saying? Now, on the other side for Texas A&M, you got Nick Scorton, who's also a beast. going to probably be a, a top draft pick. But Kyle Kennard is different. That was a great transfer that South Carolina ended up getting. So my concern, can they block him, you know? And will they be willing to take some of them check downs if they don't always get the big plays? Now, Marshall Reed showed that he's able to make the big plays. But again, hostile environment, true freshman, kind of first career start. It's a little nerve wracking a little bit for me. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I think this could be a tough one to ask him to do on the road. Now, if you're South Carolina, right? Lenore Sell is not having, you know, the, the greatest year ever. You know what I'm saying? Same kind of thing. Lean on Raheem Sanders, right? They kind of do it by committee a little bit. With, with Thomas, obviously, uh, one of their leading receivers. But when you break it down, 240, 170, 100, 100, like they like to run the ball with Sanders and then they set up the play action, right? Same thing I was talking about with Texas A&M. So it's going to be critical that they do this again. And just get Lenore Sellers in the rhythm. He's shown when he's in the rhythm, he can make plays. He can throw it down the field, right? He can make you pay. So if I'm them, I'm going to run the ball. I'm going to see if Texas A&M can slow down my run game. You know what I'm saying? That's going to be pivotal in this one. All right, a couple more things to know, obviously, in this one, right? South Carolina's lost two of their last three. And Texas A&M has won seven straight games since their first loss, obviously, to Notre Dame. So I didn't want to point that out as well. So Texas A&M is streaking. But again, emotional win. It's going to be interesting to see how they respond. Now, Texas A&M fans, I'm not coming against y'all. I, I think y'all are a great team. You know what I'm saying? I just think that's a tough spot to put a true freshman, potentially. Again, has it been announced? We'll see what happens if it is Marcel Reed. We're going to find out, you know what I'm saying? But a tough test for them on the road. Not a bad spot to lose. I don't think that would hurt y'all. You know, playoff chances potentially. Y'all still be in contention for SEC championships. Still can potentially get an automatic bid. I think you guys would be just fine if you happen to lose. If, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to go with upset alert. I think Kyle Kennard has a big game. Raheem Sanders. I think they're able to, for the first time, not necessarily bully Texas A&M, but they're going to be able to create some open rush lanes and be able to get him going, and that's going to set up the play-action pass. I think they're going to make some big plays in this one. I, th I got South Carolina with a close upset win. 27-24, the Gamecocks hand Texas A&M just their second loss of the season and their first loss in the SEC 
Could be wrong. Y'all got on me on my other video with Notre Dame and Navy. Notre Dame beat them out the fray. And that was all she wrote. But let's see if South Carolina can pull it off. They'll go to five and three on the season. Comment below. Am I crazy? Can Texas a or can South Carolina uh, pull off this upset? Or will Texas seeing them win this one pretty handily like the other one we've seen? Comment down below.